Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon, and we're going to learn about the ridge plot in Seaborn. Now, this is a composition of many KDE plots, technically two of them, and it is really, really interesting. I think it adds a little bit of extra texture, extra texture above and beyond just a regular histogram type of plot. So here we're doing just the libraries that we're going to be working with today, standard data science libraries. This one I'm doing right here, sns.setThemeStyleWhite. This is just, it is going to be important to make sure the background of our facet grid, which is where we'll build the ridge plot, is white, essentially. Just making sure that it's easy to put the labels on top. So this is important for what we're going to do today. Uh, here I'm just going to load up my data set. This is just this is from my reservoir in GitHub, but this is just the penguins data set from sklearn, I believe. Okay, so just species, island, and just a few numeric uh, columns that we're going to deal with today. Okay, so going to, what I did here is I just like to build up my own palette. I like to usually experiment with, with stuff. And I experimented here with the color that I like. So here I built it at color mine. You can go there and just build your own, or you can use the palette that I set up here. Just looking at the data types here, we have some floats and objects, and just to make sure I know what's going on, but because they're floats, just to show you a classic seaborne type of histogram plot. So what I normally do is four feet in DF columns. If the feature is equal to a float, if it's a data type float, then I'll do a histogram. Or if it was an object, I would do a count or something like that. But just showing histograms. So really, really great, valuable, so important and what I would do normally for every histogram. If I have some extra time and I need to show these histograms to someone, I think a ridge plot can be very valuable, just a little bit extra. There's a little bit of work to build, but it's very beautiful when you, you do build. Okay. So here what we're going to do is we're going to go, first I'm going to make a palette, so SNS dark palette. I'm going to select number one from the palette that I created up above, so the first position. You can try any of the positions you want. And I'm going to make three colors for this palette. Okay, So we can see here, if you run this, and just looking at what P is, this is the palette. These are the three different colors that we have. Okay? So to build this ridge plot that we're going to build right here. Okay, So first, we're going to start with the facet grid. And I thought maybe we could show uh, what each step looks like. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this like a G. So we'll make a facet grid and make the background. Nothing super interesting there. Let's move this after we do, let's do one B K D. Let's, let's see what that looks like after we do just one. And this, just to note here, KDE, so G dot map, so I assign facet grid to an object. G dot map is gonna put the KDE plot in each position. I'm going to plot the body mass, um, one of the numeric columns. I'm going to adjust by 0.5, kind of make it a little bit more compact, clip on false and fill true. So this is filling the background, this is filling the bulk of this, and alpha one and one. So it's a fully strong filled plot. And so if we look at what this is after we do the second KDE plot. So here, let's just look at this one right here. And so you can see here, it's kind of actually, you can't really see this, but what the second one did here is, and you'll notice this down when we do the other plots, it makes this white outside edge. And you'll notice this, the way that we know this is it does not have the fill equals true. Essentially by default, fill equals false. So this is not filling it, this is plotting the outline of the KDE plot. So looking at that, so here we're going to build a little function. What this is going to do is just clean up the stuff on the left-hand side, okay? And then we're going to map that with the species. So we're going to map these two labels here. Let's see what the figure looks like after this. So we make a little label function. This is going to clean up the left-hand side and just make a little bit, put this Adelia, Chinstrap, and Genton. These are the names of the islands from uh, where the penguins are. So. We can see what we're getting there, and let's see the next one. So we're going to do g dot figure dot subplots under slash like dust. So this is a height space. This is kind of removing some space so that they actually sit kind of a little bit more on top of each other. It's going to look ugly when we first do this, 
but you can see now here we see this white outline Caden and Eplot. They're sitting on top of each other now. They're kind of scrunched up. Normally you wouldn't want to do this, but for the ridge plot, this is specifically the effect we want. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the x ticks, or sorry, the titles to zero. So we're going to get rid of this species equals Adelai, species equals Chinstrap, because we now have the labels on the side for what we got in this function right here. Okay, so I get rid of that. The x ticks on the left hand side, we're going to just change those to zero and we're going to say zero. So there's nothing going to be over here. And we're giving x ticks an empty list. That's because it's expecting more than one. That's the ticks or the numbers right here. We don't want to see any of that. So we're going to get rid of that. And then we're going to despine this. And this is going to get rid of this spine right here. So get rid of it, clean it up a little bit. And we'll see we get a much nicer looking ridge plot at the end right here. Okay. So what I thought would be good, this is quite a few lines of code. It's not specifically anything super difficult, but if we want to do this more than once, this is a great use case for not doing this like this and doing this in a function so we have a nice little cleaned up coding. So what I did here is I selected everything that we had up above and I put it into a function. I added a couple things here. I added the g.fig, which takes out the figure attribute, which is the background backdrop. I'm going to go dot subtitle. So it's going to add a title just to this little section right here. Of all these three plots, it's going to add in the title of what that is, what the feature is at the time. So it's really valuable just to see what we're going to do because we're going to loop through these and look at a whole bunch of these at once. And if we don't have the title, it's kind of hard to see. So you're just running the function once. So we see rich plot. We're putting in our island, our category in the left hand side, and this is the first feature. And then in the right hand side, we're putting in our continuous feature right here. Okay. So our category and our continuous feature, and it makes this nice plot. I did df.columns to get the column names and I selected copy and paste just to be sure I'm making the spelling them correctly. Put the four continuous features right here. And I'm going to do this a few times. So I'm going to do this with island first. So the, as the category, I'm going to use that to separate the data set. And we're going to get four or five overlapping plots here. So you can see it takes a little while to generate, but we get this. You can, can't really see the effect on all of these, but you can see where it does overlap. I think this gives you such a good contrast to really see. You can see that there is some, you know, there is this this chunk of this distribution of Biscoe, this distribution that's similar to the other bins. There is a bulk of this distribution over here. But what I would say is I would be curious about this group and why are they so related to these other two islands? There might be some interesting connection there. And this is something that would be very hard to see in anything but a rich plot. So this allows you to see in a different perspective, the distribution's kind of on top of each other. So again, just you kind of notice some different things right here. Really, really, it looks really cool as well, I would say. Okay, so here, just doing them another loop for the sex, and this one we did for the species. This is breaking it up by the three different species or breaking it up by the three different islands. Okay, so really cool, the extra detail you can get seeing these distributions on top of each other. Really cool effect if you ever want to impress your bosses very unique type of plot and it just goes to show the amount of the almost unlimited possibilities you have with sleep. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.